Hello YouTube, uh, today we're going to go over tangent planes, differentiability, and linearization, and we're just going to do some practice problems. I have about two for each. Um, and so yeah, my voice is obviously not the greatest right now. I'm sick. I went to go see a movie, and I just thought I should do some math problems and share it with you guys. So there you go. I'm here now. Okay, so for tangent planes, the key formula for this is shown right here. Uh, you can read it for yourself, but I want you to guys to think about where that comes from, and if you know point-slope form, or calculating the slope at a point for like a tangent line, for example, you notice the similarities. M is slope, the partial derivative of x and the partial der derivative of y are also the slope, and that's how you go from, um, I guess, two-dimensional calculus to three-dimensional. Uh, that's the differences here, so we're just going to learn how to do some of the problems. So you should already know how to do this. I'm not going to teach it to you. I'm just going to go over some problems. Um, kind of more of like a walkthrough than a video tutorial. <laughs> okay. So first problem here, uh, you have your function, and you're asked to calculate the uh, partial derivative of x and partial derivative of y at a certain point. Or, excuse me, you're trying to find a tangent plane at a certain point. So first thing you're going to want to do is actually figure out where this is um, so remember f of x, y is also like saying z, just as f of x is the same as saying y kind of thing. So we're going to find out what z is. So of this point, you would plug it in, you would get 1, 2, and then let's see. So 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 squared is 4, so you would get 6. All right. So now we're going to take the partial derivative. So the partial derivative of f, the partial derivative of x would be, uh, so you just take the derivative with respect to x like normal. So 3 times 2 is 6. x minus 1 to the exponent would be squared. And then since we're treating this as a constant, if you say that was number was 3, for example, it would be plus 0. So we'll just leave it as 6x squared for uh, the partial derivative at x. Now the partial derivative of y would be, oops, it's partial derivative of y, now we're treating x as a constant. So if you're adding a constant, if this number was, this whole thing was 3, uh, it would be 0. So you would say 0 plus, but I'm going to ignore that, so it's just 0. And then what's the derivative of 2y, or y squared, sorry, which is 2y getting ahead of myself. Okay, so now we need to calculate it at that certain point. So I, I know that's like evaluated at, and we're going to evaluate it at that point. So it was 1, 2, I believe. But since there is no y in that one, you could say at x equals 1 and this one at y equals 2. Um, okay, so what would you get if you plug in the values? This would simply be 6, and this would be 4. So what does this number mean? Well, this number represents the slope of the x and the slope of the y um, at this point here. Uh, so that's what it means there. So now all you do is you use the formula here and the reason why you should use it is to calculate the tangent plane which is what the directions asked for. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do that now. So we'll have z minus and z naught is that, 6, that's why we had to calculate it z minus 6 equals the slope of f of, of f at ah, partial derivative of x, which is 6, times x minus 1. So I'm just going to show you where this comes from. So that's for that. This goes to here. It's kind of showing where it comes from. Plus the slope of y, which we calculated, is 4. So then we get 4 times y minus the y value, which is 2. All right. But let's simplify this, and if we were to simplify it, we should get something like, here, let's see, let's do math. Um, z equals 6x, let's do, would be plus 4y, and that would add up to, because you're bringing 6 to both sides, remember, um, should be plus 8, no, minus 8, minus 8, and that is... The equation for the tangent plane at the point given. So a tangent plane, so this would be 
Okay, I'll do a little bit of explanation. Skip this part if you don't need it. Um, so here's a circle. Here's a tangent line at that point. Um, that would be two-dimensional. Now if you had this and we made it a sphere, um, this would be a tangent plane. So there's the difference. <laughs> yeah, you get the point. Okay, next problem. So we're going to do another one, another example here. So partial, you're asked to find the partial derivative at a certain point. So the partial derivative of x and the partial derivative of y. Right? Okay, so same thing here. We're going to want to calculate this point, um, what the z value of this point is. You kind of have to do that on your own. So let's just plug it in. So you plug in x for 1, 1 for x, and 0 for y. And you should get 0. So this is point is actually 1, 0, 0. It's because it's, yeah, sine of 0 is 0. Okay. Now, partial derivative of x, you treat y as a constant. So, derivative of sine is cosine. And since we've got to use the chain rule, the derivative of, let's see, you're treating y as a constant. So if y is a number, the number would come out, right? There you go. So it would be y cosine xy. Uh, okay. And that's evaluated at 1, 0, and you should get, if you plug it in, 0. Alright, because y is 0, if you multiply a number by 0, you get 0. Okay. Next one, derivative with respect to y, partial derivative. Same thing, derivative of sine is cosine xy, but now we're treating x as a number, and if x is a number or a constant, the constant comes out. And you have x cosine xy. Do the same thing here. Partial derivative of 1, 0. Oh, with, at that point for y would give you 1. Because cosine of 1, cosine of 0 is 1. There you go. So now you plug it into the formula. And you get z minus 0 equals the slope of x, the partial derivative of x, which is 0, times the quantity x minus 1, plus the partial slope of y is 1, times y minus 1. And if you simplify all that, you should get z equals y. And that is it. So that is the tangent plane at that point. Okay, now we're going to go over differentiability. And the directions for this problem ask, or say, show that f of xy is differentiable. And to simply show that a function is differentiable, you simply have to take the partial derivative um, with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. That's it. And if, they, and if you yield a number, it's differentiable. If you don't, then it's not. That's simple. So, let's do that. Okay. Um... First, let's uh, figure out what the third value is here. Um, so you just plug in negative, <coughs> negative 1 and 2. And you should get 7. Yeah, 7. There you go. Alright, so now you have your point. Let's just take the partial derivative. Um, so we're treating y as a constant, so the derivative of x is 1. And y is a constant, so that would be plus 0. And then minus... 2, treating x as a constant, or as y as a constant, so the constant would come out if it was a number, so it would be minus 2y. So it's like you're taking the derivative of 2x times the constant. Okay, so there's that. And let's do f of partial derivative of y. So the derivative of x is a, pretending x is a constant, so that would be 0. And then Derivative of y squared is 2y minus 2, because that's a constant, comes out, and this time it'll be x, because we're treating y, or we're treating x as the constant, so it comes out as well. Derivative of 2, 2y, come on, two. derivative of 2y is 2, 
And since x is a constant, it comes out again, as I've said a bunch of times. Okay. So, now that I think about it, we didn't even need to do this part at all, really. Um, since these two are polynomials, so that's the key here. I'm going to change that, write that in a different color. Since these two are polynomials, that means they are continuous everywhere. Remember that all polynomials are continuous everywhere. So therefore, since they're continuous, that means they're differentiable. So if they're continuous, therefore, it's differentiable. Okay, next problem. So now we're going to go over linearization. And linearization is kind of not the best word to really describe what we're doing. I guess you would call it planearization or planization of some sort because we're not finding the line, we're finding the plane. Uh, pretty much is the same thing as finding the tangent plane. It's just another way of calling it, and the way the notation for writing the linearization, all you have to do is L of x, y is treated as your z. Um, that's the key here. So keep that in mind. I'm going to erase that, so but just keep that in mind. Okay. So. Let's take the partial, oh, wait, let's do this first. So, plug in 1, 1, and you would get uh, the natural log of 2, um, simply because 1 plus 1 is 2, and then, yeah, ln, okay. Um, so that's a number, remember that's a number, that's about just over half, about 0.7, I think, anyway, 0.69, I don't know. Um, okay, so now let's take the partial derivative of x, partial derivative with respect to x, and that would be, okay, so just take the, the, you know, the derivative of the natural log is 1 over that something, and that something is in the parentheses, so x squared plus y, and then you take the derivative of that something on the inside, and since we're doing it with respect to x, um, and treating y as a constant, derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of y um, since we're treating y as a number, so say it was 3, would be plus 0, or 0. So this is the derivative with, uh, partial derivative with respect to x, and we're evaluating at the point 1, 1, and that would, if you plug it in, 2 over 2 gives you 1. Cool. Okay, now we're going to take the partial <coughs> derivative at, or partial derivative of y. The partial derivative of y same thing, the derivative of the natural log is 1 over that something, so x squared plus y. And since we're treating x, <coughs> x squared as a constant, that would be, go to 0, and y, is a, y would be times 1, so the derivative of y is 1, so I'll we'll just leave it like that. Same thing, plug this, these two values in, and you would get 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. And those are the slopes at that point in the x direction and y direction. Okay, so going back to this formula here, uh, pretty much for a linearization, take this and turn that into L, or the capital L and of x, y. So that's just another way of saying linearization. <laughs> okay, so as you know that this formula is finding a plane, not really a line in multivariable calculus. Okay, so, um, Let's do it. So L of xy, which is like saying z, minus the z value, which we calculated to be ln of 2, equals uh, the slope, which is 1, so I guess I'll put it there, times x minus 1, plus the slope of y, 1 half, times y minus 1. And these points, the 1s, are coming from the point that was given in the equation. And then we'll simplify that, and you'll get x plus 1 half y plus the natural log of 2 minus 3 halves. And that is your equation and the answer, which is the linearization of this function. <coughs> okay, we're going to do one more. And this is a key problem. Uh, you're asked to approximate a value of this function using tangent planes, and that's really what this is used for. So that's why I started for practicality, like understanding why we're uh, doing this. <laughs> problem in this concept. So it's similar, uh, think in two-dimensional calculus we talked about Euler's method and approximating um, values of a function using tangent lines, um, but most of the time they'll be over or underestimates, but never mind. Anyway, um, so this is just 
along the same roots. So let us find the partial derivative or the partial derivative of x and y. Um, but first, let's figure out what that third y value is or the z value. So you plug in zero zero, and you should get out zero zero. E to the zero is one, and there you go. So now we're going to take the partial derivative of x. So you would get, well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, but in this case it's e to the x y, times 1, which is nothing, or does nothing to the problem. And then let's find the partial derivative of y, and you would get, take the derivative of e to the x plus y, which is e to the x plus y, times 1 again, because... Uh, you're treating uh, y, derivative of y is 1, same thing here, derivative of x is 1, and the reason why there's nothing else is because the derivative of a constant is 0. Okay, so now we evaluate it at the point 0, 0, evaluate it at 0, 0, and we get 1 for both, because 0 plus, oh wait, yeah, 1 for both, derivative of 0 is 1, or er, the e to the 0 is 1. Okay, so notice how these two are the same, right? So now you just take, you use the formula, and plug in the values, and if you simplify, you get that. So x plus y plus 1 is the equation for the tangent plane, but we're asked to approximate the value. So let's do that. Um, so L of 0 0.1... 0 0.05 plug in the numbers you get 0 0.1 plus 0 0.05 plus 1 which is equal to 1.15 so that is your approximation but um, if you plug those values in for the actual function you can check how close you are to the answer so if you plug that in your calculator you would get um, let's see 1.16 which is very close but it goes on more it's like 182 and whatever so comparing this value to this value we're a hundredth off which is a pretty good approximation um, and that's why in this that's why this concept is used so this is your answer um, and this is what you did to get to your answer um, and that's pretty much how you use linearization to approximate values of a multi of a three dimensional function. Keep practicing and keep up the good work.